If you manage a website with insufficient traffic for statistically valid A-B testing, you still can and should do conversion rate optimization. In this video, you will get clear step-by-step -step instructions and excel in optimization without A-B testing. You will learn how to validate your ideas and hypothesis without relying on A-B tests. You'll be able to conduct tests and experiments tailored to low traffic scenarios. And you will implement strategies that lead to improved user experience and increased conversion. If you have questions, suggestions, or you want to share your successes, which I hope you do, feel free to contact me through LinkedIn. Now, before we start, you first need to know if you are dealing with a low traffic website. For this, you need to understand the minimal detectable effect, also known as the MDE. Whether you can run an A-B test and for how long depends on the number of website visitors and conversions going through your test. The more website visitors and conversions, the smaller statistically valid uplift you can detect. The minimum difference you can reliably detect in your test results is called the minimal detectable effect. In other words, it tells us how big the uplift needs to be before we can confidently say it's a real improvement, not just a random variation. With an MDE of 5%, you can find a statistically valid uplift of 5% or higher in your experiment. The lower the MDE, the higher the impact you can make with your AP test, because a low MDE means you can detect smaller significant changes. A low traffic website receives insufficient visitors and conversions to conduct statistically valid A-B testing. With limited visitors numbers and conversions, MDE scores are too high, making it difficult or impossible to obtain reliable results from your A-B tests. High MDE scores indicates that only very large differences between test variations can be detected with statistical reliability. I strive for an MDE of 5% or lower with a maximum test duration of four weeks. The absolute threshold is an MDE of 10% with a maximum test duration of six weeks. If the MDE is 10% or higher, do not run A-B tests and explore other methods to validate ideas and hypotheses. Understanding your site's traffic volume and MDE scores is crucial for selecting the most appropriate validation methods. Recognizing possible limitations allows you to tailor your approach effectively. By adopting your strategies to meet your website's specific conditions, you ensure the use of the most effective optimization and validation techniques. You can use an online calculator to calculate your MDE scores for each page or template like all product detail pages or all list pages combined. For the calculator, I recommend Spiro's A-B test calculator. To calculate your MDE scores using Spiro's calculator, first select pre-test analysis. Next, follow three steps. First, insert the data. Input the average weekly traffic and conversions from the page or pages you want to test. Let's imagine you have 10,000 weekly visitors with 4,000 conversions. Adding more variants to the test increases your minimal detectable effect since your traffic is split over more variations. Next, adjust the settings over here. Set the confidence level between 85% and 95% and maintain the power at 80%. A confidence level below 85% is generally not recommended as it might affect the reliability of your results. Finally, the third step, review the MDE scores over here. If the MDE for six weeks of testing is above 10%, the score is too high for reliable A-B testing with this KPI. If your MDE scores are too high, you can adjust the test KPI to a micro conversion instead of your final primary conversion. For example, if you run an A-B test on your product detail page, you can track the number of card visits instead of the number of transactions. 
As you have many more visitors in your cards than visitors on your thank you page, you need fewer visitors in your test to make your A-B test statistically valid. This is because the conversion rate to your card is much higher than the conversion rate to a transaction. It is better to set the KPI to two steps down the funnel. You can game one step, simply make the call to action button massive with arrows pointing towards it, or make a fake promise. However, if the visitor takes two steps towards the final conversion, it does show a stronger intention to buy eventually. Use a microconversion as your test KPI and calculate your MDE scores again. If the MDE for six weeks of testing is still above 10%, the score is too high for reliable A-B testing. In that case, do not use A-B testing to validate your hypothesis. Instead of A-B testing, there are several other methods to test your ideas. These methods are related to experimentation or marketing platforms and user testing. Because these methods may not provide the same level of reliability as A-B testing, it is often beneficial to use a combination of several methods to strengthen your validation process. On marketing platforms, you can use Google Ads, social ads, and email testing to test different types of copy, value propositions, USPs, and visuals. The variations that get the most engagement can be used on your landing pages, for instance. These methods provide quick, measurable feedback and can target specific demographics and interests. A major limitation of Google and social ads is that they can be costly. For email testing, you need a sufficient number of subscribers to obtain statistically valid results. From a user testing perspective, there are several methods you can apply. Let's cover five. The five second test, preference test, first click test, usability test, and card sorting. During a five second test, participants are shown a web page or design for five seconds. After these five seconds, you can ask questions such as, what do you think this page was about? What do you think you can do on this website? What does the company sell? And why should you buy from this company? and what grabbed your attention. A five second test is quick and easy to set up and ideal for evaluating the clarity and effectiveness of your design's first impression. In a preference test, participants are shown two or more designs and asked to choose their preferred option. Beforehand, you could ask a question like, which design is easier to understand? After the participant selects a design, Ask follow-up questions, like what specifically about this design did you prefer over the others? And what did you like about that design? Preference tests work well for comparing different design layouts, headlines, value propositions, and other elements to see which resonates most with your audience. With the first click test, participants are shown a web page or interface and asked to complete a task by clicking on the first element they think is correct. This helps with evaluating the effectiveness of your web page or interface design. A usability test is perhaps the most known method. Participants perform specific tasks on your website while observers watch, listen, and take notes. With a low traffic website, it is an important and ideal method. Recruit five to 10 participants representing your target audience. Create a set of tasks for participants to complete on your website. Make the tasks as personal and relevant for the participant as possible. Next, observe and record their interactions. Noting any issues or obstacles they encounter. Make improvements based on your finding and then run another usability test to see if the issues have been resolved and to discover any new issues. Usability testing provides in-depth insights into user behavior and usability issues. It can, however, be time-consuming and resource-intensive. Finally, there is card sorting. Participants organize topics into categories that make sense to them. 
This helps understand how users perceive information, how to logically group it, and thus how to structure content on your website. The findings could be validated with tree testing, which is the opposite of card sorting. In a tree test, participants are asked to locate specific items within a simplified text-only version of the website's hierarchy. Simply provide participants with tasks that involve finding specific items within the tree. Collect and analyze the data to see where participants succeed or struggle. When you combine these six methods, you can validate your ideas and hypotheses without A-B testing. For example, let's say you have high bounce rates on your most important landing page. Based on thorough research, you have two hypotheses. First, when the design gets a clear visual hierarchy, bounce rates will decrease. And second, when the header copy effectively communicates the value proposition, bounce rates decrease. This can be validated by testing different header copies in Google Ads and determining the most appealing design through a preference test. Finally, through a five second test, you can test the old situation and a new one based on the first two tests. So in summary, if you have a low traffic website, you can and should still perform conversion rate optimization. Validate your ideas through marketing channels and user testing and step-by-step -step optimize your website or digital products. <laughs>